Okay, be honest. Have you ever gone down a YouTube rabbit hole? You know, hours just disappear. You're hooked on awesome videos. And you start thinking, man, these YouTubers have got it made. But how do they actually make a living from it? Like, how do they go from just hitting upload to actually, you know, getting paid? That's the question, right? And it's probably not as easy or glamorous as it seems. Exactly. So we're diving into this Shopify article all about how to make money on YouTube. And it's full of real strategies, not just hoping your video goes viral. Yeah, it's really interesting stuff, actually. We're talking about practical steps that anyone can take, whether they want to be a full-time YouTuber or are just curious about the business side of it. I love that. So they start with the YouTube Partner Program, which seems like uh, the key to everything. But you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 public watch hours just to apply. 4,000 hours is like... A lot of watch time. It's a ton. Yeah. Building an audience takes some serious time and effort. But the article actually walks you through applying to the partner program, which I thought was pretty oh. cool. The thing is, it's not only about those ads that play before videos. Wait, really? Isn't getting into the partner program all about getting those ads on your videos? Well, it's a big part of it, but there's more. The partner program also gives you other ways to earn money, like YouTube premium revenue. Have you heard of that? Mm -hmm. It's where people pay to skip ads. Oh, yeah. I've definitely been tempted by that a few times. Well, even when viewers skip ads with premium, creators still get part of that subscription money. It's like this bonus that runs in the background. Wow. So even people who are trying to avoid ads could be supporting creators. That's really interesting. No wonder everyone talks about the partner program like it's the holy grail. But you're saying the article mentions even more ways to make money on YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's not just a one size fits all kind of thing. OK, now I'm even more curious. What other money making methods are we talking about? So what else is there besides the partner program? I'm dying to know. Well, they talk about channel memberships, which seems mm -hmm. like a cool way to like create a VI key club around your content. Oh, yeah. I've seen YouTubers mention those. What's the big deal with those? It's a really smart way for creators to build a stronger community, which is so important these days. The article was saying that it's not just about letting fans support you directly, though that's obviously a big part of it. Right, because then it's like you have that direct connection. Exactly. It's also about giving those members something extra, some kind of perk that makes them feel special, mm -hmm. like early access to videos, special badges, even Q&As with the creator. That makes a lot of sense. People love to be part of something exclusive, and creators get that more predictable income instead of relying just on ads. Totally. Speaking of different income streams, they also talk about affiliate marketing. That always felt a little, I don't know, tricky to me. I know what you mean. It's like, how do you promote stuff without sounding like you know, a commercial. I'd want to keep it real with my audience. Oh, for sure. Well, the article actually addressed that. It basically said that you should only promote things that you actually use and like, stuff you'd recommend to a friend. Okay, so it's not just about pushing products. It's more like sharing what you love. Right. And when it's done right, it can be good for everyone. The creator makes some money, and the viewers get introduced to something new they might like. But let's talk about something completely different YouTube shorts. Have you seen those? They are everywhere now, and the articles seem to suggest they could be a big deal for making money, too. Oh, yeah, shorts. Okay, I'll admit, I've spent way too long some nights going down those rabbit holes. They're so quick and addictive. But I always thought they were just, like, fun little videos, not something you could build a business on. Me too. But they were saying that shorts can actually lead to brand deals. Any you can earn ad revenue from them, too. Seriously? I had no idea. That's amazing. I guess it makes sense. They're so popular, they must be getting a ton of views. Right. And it seems like a really cool way to try different types of content and reach new people. Speaking of adapting and trying new things, we have to talk about live streams, too. Yes. Live streams are the best for that in-the-moment feel. You know, it's like hanging out with the creator. But how do they make money from those? Besides, like, obvious sponsorships, of course. Well, the article mentioned two big ones. Super Chat and super stickers. Okay, I think I've heard of those. Remind me how they work again. Sure, so imagine you're watching a live stream and the chat is going crazy. With Super Chat, you pay to have your comment highlighted and pinned to the top so everyone sees it. Oh yeah, I have seen that. It's a fun way to show support for the creator. Exactly, and it helps your comment stand out. Then there are super stickers, which are like visually amped up Super Chats. Instead of just words, viewers send these animated stickers. So it's kind of like sending them a virtual gift while they're live. Yeah, exactly. And for the creators, those super chats and stickers are a direct way for fans to show appreciation and, you know, give them a little financial support in real time. 
I love that. It just adds a whole other level of interaction. But okay, let's talk about the big leagues becoming a full-on YouTube influencer. The article made it clear that it's more than just having a lot of followers. Definitely not. It's like running your own business. It takes planning, strategy, really knowing your audience. So it's about building a brand, not just being internet famous. Where do you even begin with something like that? Well, they stressed how important niche relevance is. Basically, finding that specific area you're good at and passionate about and really owning it. Okay, niche relevance. So like instead of trying to do everything, you find your lane and become the expert in that thing. You got it. It's all about giving your audience something specific and valuable that they can't get anywhere else. That's how you build a dedicated following. That makes a lot of sense. It, it's about quality over quantity. Exactly. And once you've established your niche and have that engaged audience, that's when those influencer marketing opportunities, the brand deals and stuff start to come into play. So you've got your niche, you've got your audience. How do you actually connect with brands? Does the article give any advice on that? It does. It mentioned a bunch of platforms that are really helpful for this. One being Shopify Collabs. Have you heard of that? Shopify Collabs. No. Oh, what's that? It's basically this marketplace that connects creators with brands looking for partnerships and collaborations. Oh, wow. So it's like a matchmaker for YouTubers and brands. Yeah, exactly. It helps you find companies that are a good fit for you and your content, and it makes it easier to set up those deals. That is so cool. I had no idea platforms like that existed. It really shows how much this whole influencer marketing world is booming right now. For sure. And the article even mentioned that depending on the size of your audience and your niche, you can earn anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to get this over $20,000 per video. Wait, $20,000 for one video? Okay, now we're talking. Oh, right. But of course, that's not typical for everyone. And it probably takes a lot of work to get to that level. It's mm -hmm. important to remember that. Oh, absolutely. It's not like you just post a video and bam, thousands of dollars appear. But it is inspiring to know the potential is there. So besides those influencer deals, what other ways were they saying YouTubers can make money? Well, they talked about selling merch, which I always thought was a fun one. Like who wouldn't want to rock their favorite YouTubers t-shirt? Right. I love that stuff. It's a great way for fans to show their support. Plus it's free advertising for the creator too. Exactly. It's a win-win for everyone. Okay. What else? What about crowdfunding? Do they talk about that at all? I always wondered how that works for YouTubers. They do. They mentioned Kickstarter and Indiegogo as platforms where creators can get funding for bigger projects like documentaries or even video games. Oh, wow. That's really cool. So it's like they're not just relying on themselves or big companies. They're getting their audience involved in making their dreams a reality. Exactly. And speaking of making dreams a reality, the article wasn't all about, you know, the glamorous stuff. It also talked about the stuff that's important but not as exciting, like SEO. SEO. Oh, yeah, that's the behind the scenes stuff, right? Can you explain it for those of us who aren't like tech experts. Yeah, basically it's making sure that your videos are easy for people to find when they're searching for stuff on YouTube. So like using the right keywords in your title and description so more people actually click on your video. Exactly. And they even suggested looking at what other popular YouTubers in your niche are doing and learning from them. It's all about getting your videos seen by as many of the right people as possible. Which makes total sense. I never thought about it that way. It's not enough to just create great content. You've got to be smart about how you share it, too. A hundred percent. And another thing they emphasized was writing really strong video descriptions. Oh, yeah. Descriptions. That's something I always forget about. What did they say about those? Basically, they said it's important to make them both informative and engaging. So you want to clearly explain what your video is about, but also hook the viewer and make them want to watch it. Okay, so find that balance between giving information and making it sound fun and interesting. Exactly. They even suggested adding a call to action at the end, like asking people to leave a comment or subscribe. Oh, yeah, like what do you think? Or don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Classic. This is great. I'm learning so much about what goes on behind the scenes of a successful YouTube channel. Me too. This article is a gold mine of information. It's amazing how much thought and strategy goes into it. It's definitely more than just, you know, pressing record and hoping for the best. For sure. You really do have to treat it like a business. Absolutely. It takes passion, dedication, and a willingness to learn and adapt. Mm -hmm. But the payoff can be huge. Totally. And you get to be your own boss, create your own schedule, and make content you're really excited about. What could be better than that? Seriously. Okay. But besides those specific tips, what really stood out to me from this whole article was the emphasis on authenticity. Oh, 100%. 
from choosing the right affiliate products mm -hmm. to making content that truly reflects your interests. It kept coming back to that idea of being genuine. And I think that's so important. People can tell when you're not being real and they're drawn to creators who are relatable and authentic. Totally. Because when you're genuinely passionate about what you're creating, it shows and it resonates with your audience on a much deeper level. It's like that saying, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Of course, it still takes effort and dedication, but when you're truly invested in your content, it makes the whole process that much more enjoyable. Totally. And that sense of fulfillment, knowing you're sharing something you love with the world, that's priceless. Couldn't have said it better myself. It really does come down to passion, doesn't it? It really does. Okay, so to wrap things up, you don't need to be a tech genius or a marketing pro to make money on YouTube. Not at all. This Shopify article breaks it down so well and makes it seem totally doable, even for someone just starting out. Right. They cover everything from the technical stuff like SEO and descriptions, which we talked about, to the big picture stuff like finding your niche. It's all about turning something you're passionate about into a real business. And I like that they didn't sugarcoat it. You know, they made it clear that building a YouTube channel takes work, but the rewards are there if you're willing to put in the effort. Exactly. And the best part is you get to be your own boss, make your own hours and create content about something you actually care about. There's something really powerful about that, being in control of your own creative journey. Absolutely. So anyone listening who is even a little bit curious about starting their own channel or maybe taking their existing channel to the next level, go read that article. We'll be sure to link it in the show notes. It's full of even more great tips that we didn't have time for today. It's a great starting point for anyone who wants to turn their YouTube dreams into a reality. I love that. And with that, we'll wrap up this deep dive into the world of making money on YouTube. Remember, the most important thing is to find your unique voice and perspective, be passionate about what you're creating, and don't be afraid to share it with the world.